ring the alarm. Mel is starting a weekly vlog in her office. That never happens. If you've been here for a while, if you've been watching this year's weekly vlogs, you'd know every single vlog starts out in my kitchen. It's like ritual at this point. I don't know if it's because I spend a lot of time in there, whether it's cleaning or cooking or prepping something or by reflex, I'm just taking my camera over there to kind of give you guys a different setting, a different scenario to kind of do a little something different. Now it's not different. Now that's the norm. And so I thought today <laughs> I would throw you guys off and start out in the office. So welcome to a new weekly vlog, friends. Very exciting if I do say so myself, because let me tell you, I've been trying to pick up the camera for the past few weeks, almost I think three weeks I have gone without vlogging because things just took a turn. Okay, I've been saying it for weeks now. February has been for the dogs. February has not been a real month. And I think a lot of people that I've talked to agree with that same sentiment of what is happening in February because it's just a little too crazy. And so I've tried weekly vlogging, daily vlogging, weekend vlogging, 24 hour readathon vlogging, any sort of vlog you can potentially imagine. I have tried in the past few weeks and I vlog for a day or two and then something happens and then I try again for a day or two and then things just don't pan out. So this is me crying. What a great reference. No, really, this is me committed to actually pulling through this next week and vlogging every single day because I have been loving weekly vlogging. It is not only incredibly therapeutic, but I think it also kind of keeps me accountable with just the everyday things, with the work, with the keep up of the household. Like I think weekly vlogs are great motivators to get things done because I already have a great to-do list to do every single day. And so why not document it, share it, and again, keep myself accountable, especially as somebody with ADHD, as somebody with the espresso depressi. Okay, it shows up every once in a while. I really love implementing methods that keep me going, that keep me steady. And I found that weekly vlogging is kind of one of those things. And so I truly appreciate it. And so because of the way that things have been going down in February, I am like in desperate need. Just document everything and read and talk to you guys and keep you guys updated because it's been for the dogs, okay? We'll, we'll progressively get there because I really don't want to start out with like a super sad Debbie Downer note because we don't need that. And so let me fill you in with what's happening today. So today I have a live show at 7 p.m. We need to schedule that. I also need to import footage so that I can edit a little sponsorship, send that over to my media manager so that that can be sent out to the brand. I feel like I start every vlog out saying that, but it's just a part of the routine. It's just part of work. And so need to go ahead and do that. Then need to update you on the book I'm currently reading, what I also need to read by Friday, and then other things I am looking forward to reading this week. Also need to order one of my packages that is waiting for me at my PO box. And then on top of everything, I am thinking of going out for lunch to my favorite coffee shop because these past two weeks, if I've been going out, it's to the hospital and back, not much else. And so I need to get myself out of the house, I think, for just a little bit and get myself situated with a different ambiance so that I can truly get things done. And so I'm thinking maybe that little lunch date with myself could be quite nice, not only as a self-care moment, but also just to change scenery a little bit. And so those are the plans for the day. I also need to work on a few Patreon things as usual. So there's quite a bit to do. I have already tidied up. I've made my bed. I folded the laundry. I went to the gym. I did like all of the household things already. And so now it's time to get into the work stuff. Also got my nails done yesterday. I know a lot of you guys are always asking for like nail pictures and like show us the nails. And so got the nails done yesterday. They were a little bit disastrous. So we needed that moment. So my nail tech came over. She fixed up the situation. We went for, I guess you can call this like maybe cottage core. I really don't know. But we went for like this green design and just designs in general. I hadn't done something this intricate since I think May of last year. Because ever since I went to London in June, I've just been getting French nails every month. And I love it. Don't get me wrong. I personally love how they look. I love how they stylize the hands. And it's growth because I used to hate French nails when I was a young adult. Okay, I used to hate them. But I did need a little bit of a design for the end of February going into March to kind of change things up because I've been wearing the same exact nails for about eight months now, which is crazy. And so there's that. Got that done yesterday, which is exciting. I'm also wearing this cardigan that Vin absolutely ripped into. So I'm just going like the Bella Swan route with this one. I literally have not had 
like a hoodie or anything that has a hole in it since high school. I used to rip holes into all of my hoodies and sweatshirts and everything just to put the finger in and I have not had something like this in a while and I love that it's just this hand. Not this one but also please hold because you want to see you want to see what else we have got going on. We have got this hole right here going on which Vin also mm, ripped into. Vin's my cat by the way. And then we've got this hole at the back so we're just like we're struggling okay but I just for the aesthetic wanted to wear this one today because I haven't been wearing it because I haven't fixed it yet. I need to fix it. I'll, I'm gonna try and fix it myself. And if I can't do it myself, then it, it's going to a seamstress. But let me, let me show you. <laughs> this is such an all over the place intro. Let me show you what I'm currently reading. Give you a little update on the book and then what we're looking forward to for this upcoming week. This lighting today is also for the dogs because it looks like it's going to rain, but maybe not. I can't really tell. I love that I'm going like this because I'm just looking at the sky. There's like this huge, super gray, almost blackish cloud just going going on top of my building and I don't know what to do about it because we're struggling okay with this lighting however let me fill you in on what I'm currently reading Ricochet which I've been made aware of that I pronounce as Rick O'Shea the proper name but just no one understand I'm I, I'm trying to say Ricochet to me they all sound different but I swear I'm probably saying the exact same thing point is I am reading the second book in the Addicted series by Krista and Becca Ritchie and in the series we follow Lily and Lo who are childhood best friends who are pretending to be dating and they have been doing so for a really long time so that their families don't find out that he's an alcoholic and she's addicted to sex and for the longest time they have been putting up this facade of perfection of meeting expectations so as to not give away what is going on behind the scenes when in reality not only are they estranged from their families they have no control whatsoever over what happens in their personal life they are enabling each other to continue deeper into their addictions and several aspects of their life are also going down kill from their grades to their interpersonal relationships to even their relationship with each other it's just all on a downward spiral on this series and so the first book was the very first time that Lily and Lo attempted to date seriously and attempting to make this a real union because for the longest time even though they've been faking it they they are in love with each other and it's undeniable and so book one ends on this really sad yet uplifting hopeful note and the second book kicks up basically right after that one ends it's just been like a week or two since addicted to you ended and what i really love about the second book is that while the first book was pretty contained to lily and lo their relationship their dynamic how they're not only very self-destructive but that often projects onto the other person this book we see more of the family dynamic we see a lot of lily with her sisters a lot of lily with lo's family a lot of lily with friends a lot of Lily trying to figure out her addiction independently from Lo while Lo tries to sort out his stuff too and it is so very fascinating to see the familial dynamics honestly so in depth for the first time to see exactly how Lily navigates that familial aspect that weighs so so very heavily on her why she hasn't spoken up about her addiction why the only person who knows about this is Rose her sister and exactly how all these expectations not only weigh very heavy on her but also on the rest of her sisters. We also see a lot of Caballoway in this one. So Caballoway is Rose Calloway, Lily's sister, and then Connor Cobalt, the love interest, who is one of Lily's friends. And we see them finally strike up their relationship and see how they support each other, how they're there for each other, how they continue to be academic rivals, and how they're intellectual equals, which is very unlike, you know, every other character. They just have a very unique union. And so we get to see the origin story of that in the series before we jump into Kiss the Sky, which is Rose and Connor's book. And so I'm quite loving all of that. I think what I am not liking as much about this book that is not necessarily hindering the experience because it does add context to why Lily and Lo are so in love with each other, but I, I don't necessarily love it as much because I am more interested in seeing those familial dynamics because oftentimes when we observe addictions, we also have to observe the environment, right? The things that either help in things getting better or that exacerbate an already pre-existing condition and we have to observe just how exactly 
the individual person and their addiction is interacting with everything around them, right? It is just fascinating to see that aspect of Lily's life, which we haven't really seen before. And so when we do get the Lily and Lo tidbits, which again is what I don't necessarily love, we see flashbacks of them when they have been together as a couple and as they were fake dating and how Lo pretty much messed with Lily a lot when it came to the sexual part of it, where he constantly messed with her and teased her, not because he didn't want her, because we do know that he did and that he does, but it didn't really help Lily's condition in any way, shape, or form. And so I think seeing those flashbacks is just a little bit cringy just because of the way that they're written, so I'm not having the best time with those flashbacks, with like the dirty time and the smut and all these things, which do illustrate how their relationship has looked thus far, but I, I just, you know, they're not really like doing anything for me. Also because for a lot of these parts, they are younger, and so I don't really have an interest in reading all that. It's kind of like flying past my head, and so it's the one aspect of this book that I would say so far I am not really loving. So that's like the first order of business. I also am currently, by the way, on chapter 10, on page 155, so I'm about to start chapter 10. So that is what I'm actively currently reading. And then as far as things I'd like to read this week, one that I definitely have to read this week because it's for a Patreon book club that I run with Liv. It's like a secondary book club. It's a bi-monthly book club, so it's super lax and it's super fun. We are reading Her Radiant Curse by Elizabeth Lim. And this book is like, oh, it's not as long as I thought it would be. It's 416 pages, which is not as long as I thought this book was. I thought this book was nearing like the 500 page mark, if not around 500 pages. So I have three days to read this. Definitely can do it. As long as I'm reading like 100 to 200 pages a day, I'll have it done by Friday morning. This needs to be read. So this is the book I'm starting today. So I'll keep you guys updated on this as I continue the read because I don't fully know like what it's about aside from two sisters, a curse, a wedding competition to see who will wed a royal, I think. Something about promises to demons and just, I I don't know. The only other Elizabeth Lim book that I have read is Spin the Dawn. And I read this years ago. I read this three years ago and it was good. I had a great time with it, but it was a while ago. And so I would really love to see, and I am going to see how the writing has changed, improved with time. And the other thing I really want to start out this week is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. So I had a little incident with this book, okay? So shout out to Simon Teen, honestly, for helping a girl out. I ordered Ricochet and Powerless from Barnes and I had ordered the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. I was quite excited about it. I was like, oh my God, the pink flowers. I got really carried away by the pink flowers, I realized. And I didn't realize it was a back order and it wouldn't be delivered to me until mid-March. And so I immediately, cause I already like paid for it. I was like, hello, can you help? And so Simon Teen very kindly send this my way to have this while the exclusive edition gets here because I won't have that for like a while. I have Villains Are Destined to Die volume four. So I think that's another thing I may be reading this week, which is exciting. And so those are, those are things that are happening. Those are things that are lined up. But for now, let me go edit the sponsorship send that out to my media manager so that I can get that out of the to-do list because it has the utmost priority right now. And then we are going to head out to the coffee shop, have a nice little meal. Let's go edit. I'll see you guys in a little bit. beginning of the vlog I mentioned how I would start out the vlog different and I wouldn't be in the kitchen and yet I go out come back in and the first place I go to for the next update of the vlog is the kitchen but welcome back friends so I went out for lunch it was delicious it's always a great ambiance to be in and the chai lattes are delicious their food is amazing and overall it's just a peaceful place to be in so I got some reading done while I was there which was the plan and I read a little bit of Her Radiant Curse by Elizabeth 
limb. I read three chapters, so I'm now at the start of chapter four, which is page 47. So I read almost 50 pages if we round it up. And this book, the start of it is wild. I was a little bit fearful that it wouldn't be an easy book to get into just because it is a prequel to a pre-existing duology. And I was a little bit scared because people were like, oh, you should be reading Six Crimson Cranes before you read this one. And so I was a little bit intimidated, but immediately as I got into it, it reads almost like a fairy tale, almost like a cautionary tale. And I absolutely loved the start of this book. So I can assure that it's very easy to get into, even if you haven't read Six Crimson Cranes. And so to strip the plot line to like its bare minimum to its core, we basically follow two sisters, a really stunning ethereal one, and one that is considered the ugly one. And the prophecy in this book of sorts is that one sister must fall for the other to rise. Which one will end up fulfilling which side is yet to be known. But the book basically starts with Chani, who is our main main character, and her mother giving birth to her sister, Vana. And as she is giving birth, her mom is not doing so well. She is about to basically die, and so is the baby. And so basically the dad is told that he has to sacrifice one of the daughters for the other one to live. And that prophecy was meant to be taken in that he was supposed to take Vana, the baby girl that was being born, into the forest and sacrifice that child to the demon witch so that Chani, our main character, could live. But because as soon as he holds Vana, he goes, this child is ethereal, this child is blessed. He decides to sacrifice a child that he was not asked for. And although Chani doesn't die by mere love, she is cursed and she is given, granted, an ugly face as a curse for her father's actions. That's where we're at. That's where the book is at. I love the writing so far. It's super easy to get into. We're going to go now into the office, but I just wanted to change settings for this update because we're about to go back into the office because we've got sprints. And so I just wanted to make sure to get this update in in a different setting, but I'm about to hold myself up for about three to four hours to sprint and read and do Patreon related things. So that's the next order of business in this very poor lighting. So let's get into the sprints. I'll chat with you a little bit later. I will update you as to why Mel has not been able to vlog for these past few weeks. the nightly routine. How are we doing today? Welcome, welcome. Oh my god, Vogue, do you want to ask me 72 questions? Anyways, welcome to my bathroom. You'll probably hear the fan going. It's just what it is. I am tired. I'm ready for bed. I need to be up in about six hours, and so I am about ready to just crash. I have to edit an entire weekly vlog tomorrow. I need to clean my apartment, need to take Sil to the vet, need to pick up packages because I didn't end up doing that today, and I need to read her Radiant Curse, and that's kind of the, the main role for Thursday. However, I've been asked repeatedly as to what my skincare routine is because you guys apparently really like my skin and I appreciate it. Shout out to you. Thank you so much. Hey, you guys are going to kill me because I really don't do much. I have found over the years, especially when I was doing makeup and I was like getting really carried away by all of the trends and all of the oils and scrubs and all these different things I could do to my face that my face really kind of rejected, didn't need, didn't love, didn't want. My face started breaking out really badly. I started getting like acne burst. I started getting rosacea. I could literally grab that skin off my nose and just peel it almost as if I'd gotten sunburned, but it was just like my skin, like my skin just I don't even know what, just like burning off. It was really, really bad. And so I had to strip it down and really simplify my skincare routine. So you guys are probably gonna be shocked. I don't use sunscreen. I don't wanna hear it. I, I don't wanna hear it, okay? I don't use oils of any kind. I don't scrub my face. I don't use any toner. I don't use anything crazy. I used to, it didn't bode well for me. And so I have found that over time, this is just what works for me. I do not recommend following the same advice. I would always recommend going to a dermatologist first before you make any decisions, especially if you've got any specific skin 
skin conditions, but alongside people who are knowledgeable, this is what I have found works for me. First thing I use is a makeup balm. I really love this because it turns into an oil-based product and it's really good to break down particularly all of those heavy-duty makeup products. So if you use liquid lipstick, if you use really strong lipstick, if you use waterproof mascara, if you use any sort of really strong liquid eyeliner, gel eyeliner, this is really, really good to break everything down and just make sure that everything is kind of taken off the skin pretty well without having to really like dig in too much and mistreating your skin by rubbing it too much. And so that's like the first thing I typically go with. I only use this if I've got makeup on. If I don't have makeup on, I do not use this product and that is the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. This is the best one I've tried. Are there other equivalents that you could potentially look into? Absolutely. Actual cleanser that I use is the Youth for the People Superfood Cleanser. I absolutely love this one. It's super gentle on the skin and it really does clean everything so well, so nicely without making the skin feel like it's been like stripped off everything it's got. Especially me with dry skin, it's very easy for me to feel that way. However, sometimes when I'm just feeling a little bit dirty, but like not too much, where I just want to like spot clean through throughout the day. I use the Bioderma Micellar Water. This is the best one I have found personally. And then that's it for like the cleansing portion of it. And then when we go to what else does Mel use? It is simple. I just use moisturizer. You guys are gonna be like, Mel, what the fuck? But this is what works for my face. What can I say? My face is picky. I use the Believe True Cream Aqua Balm. This is Korean skincare. It's got all of those good ingredients for your face. It's the gel version because also, again, my face being picky, my face being extra special. It doesn't agree with cream moisturizers, which is technically what I should be using. It causes loads of breakouts for me. I haven't found one that absolutely works and so i've opted for gel typically gel is recommended for more oily to combo skin but i personally feel like it works for me just fine and then i use some lip balm laneige also korean skincare and that is literally what mel uses so if you ever have the question of like oh my god what does she use nothing the question is is really nothing i use more cleansing products than i do anything else and so there's that i went through my like alpha like gen alpha phase okay i was the kid going into sephora wanting the drunk elephant and it fucked up my skin so PSA just saying it's it's a real thing there's that I'm gonna do all this and I'll chat with you in a little bit Tuesday. My first instinct was to say happy Tuesday in France, but today is definitely Thursday. I just finished making dinner, so we're about to sit down and eat and read a little bit more because I have been reading Her Radiant Curse for the better part of the afternoon, and I am about a hundred and like sixty pages, if I'm not mistaken, from finishing the book. And so I definitely want to get at least forty more pages read tonight before I kind of wrap that up, and then tomorrow I'll finish out the remaining one hundred and twenty, maybe one hundred pages if I get lucky because I am planning on reading before bed. But aside from reading, the plans today were to clean, which I did, and then also edit the weekly vlog that needs to go up this week. And I did make headways. I am still not fully done with it. Turns out that the sponsor needs a re-edit, so I need to send that in tomorrow. And so all of those things happened. And then I had to take Sil to the vet, and I also had to fetch my packages, which I also did. And I got a few books, which I will show you after I eat. But let me show you some kitchen things. 
things that I wanted to get. And one of them I surprisingly couldn't find here in Panama. I was trying to look for a container for my honey. You guys know if you watch my vlogs, I put honey in everything. I put it in tea, I put it in coffee. I don't use any sweetener for my coffee other than honey. And also for cooking, I often use honey to like sweeten up chicken or any other recipe that I, you know, find myself in the need for it. And so honey is a staple in this household. And I couldn't find like a little pot to put it in. I figured that I would go on good old Amazon to try and find something. And I indeed found the cutest little container ever. It is a mushroom. Look at that. It's adorable. So it's a mushroom and it brings a spoon and it also brings the, the honey dripper. And so depending on what the vibe is, you can just pop that in there and you can just get your serving of honey. I got this teapot. I am very excited about it. It is stunning. Whenever I boil the water for my tea, I literally boil it in a pot, put it in a teapot, and then I serve it that way. And I would much rather do it you know, manually. And by manually, I mean on the stove. I am so afraid of electric teapots because I just feel like that's going to burst at any minute and it's going to make a mess. And so this to me just feels a little bit safer. And so I found this one on Amazon. I thought it was like the cutest thing ever. And so I got this one. Let me also tell you about an incident that I had, which is why I was gone for basically most of the day, just to make sure that that was settled because I needed to figure out what the right course of action was going to be. I got two memory foam pillows about, oh my God, I want to say like three weeks ago because my neck was not fully supported by the pillows that I was using. So I was having a lot of difficulty when I was like waking up with like some neck pain and back pain and it was not pretty. And so I decided to get memory foam pillows because my mom has a few and I really love the way that they feel. And so I got them. I washed them as the instruction said, and I dried them as the instruction said. I was really excited about it. Turns out that the pillows just when they dried they puffed up quite a lot and so the pillows were massive it was super uncomfortable to sleep with them and so I just left them on the bed as like a decorative moment to kind of puff up the bed and just give give it more pillow itch <laughs> and so I did that turns out a week went by two weeks went by three weeks went by and suddenly these memory foam pillows start stinking and I didn't realize up until yesterday literally yesterday I walk into the bedroom and I'm like what smells like that it smelled like sewer. It smelled just so freaking bad. And I went in and I just started going full dog mode. I started sniffing everything. And I was like, what smells like that? What smells like that? Until I landed on the damn pillows. The problem is not necessarily the pillows because the pillows are easily replaceable if I do need to do that. Turns out upon research, sometimes memory foam pillows like release some really like ugly smelling chemical. And so it's not abnormal, but it technically shouldn't be happening. It's what it looks like. The problem really was the fact that my mattress was stinky and I started freaking out because I was like I'm not about to change mattresses like I really love the one I have like what am I gonna do how do I clean this how do I get the smell off because it was starting to seep into my like the pillows that I'm actually using to sleep and into the actual sheets and I was like dude I was so stressed and so I started looking it up on the internet apparently baking soda does the trick and so this morning I woke up I soaked every part of the bed that was stinky with some baking soda and then Carissa one of my friends she was like listen I have a vacuum that I can bring over that's like exactly for that kind of thing and I was like please do and so she came to the rescue with the vacuum and we vacuumed my bed and we put the baking soda and it indeed did take the smell off which is so so freaking good and so there's that so I was fixing my mattress today which is why I was a gun for the day so all of those activities about sum up my day it was a chaotic one I was a little bit all over the place but we are here now to unwind and and eat and read and I think my mother is texting me because every night we play parchis I've talked about it every night we play parchis particularly over dinner I don't think today is gonna be any different mm, yeah, there we go she's texting me because I'm the one that sends the link every night and so I am going to send over a link so I guess this is what I'm gonna be doing as I eat dinner so it's like a little <laughs> tradition basically every night between my mom her partner my brother and I and so that's what we are going to do in case you guys are wondering Mel, what the hell is parchis? It's the game of India, but we play it online. And so this is just like what it looks like. You've got the board, you invite people on, you can also play online. It's really freaking cool. And we've been doing this since the pandemic and we have not stopped. It's very addicting. It's a nice little way to like play a board game online without 
you know, everybody having to convene. After that, again, a little bit of reading before bed. Tomorrow shall be a new day, hopefully a better one. And let me tell you why I haven't been really here in February. Even today, I was like, as, as all of the chaos was happening, I was like, do I pick up the camera? Do I update the vlog? Like, what do I do? I've been feeling very overwhelmed. I've been talking about it with my therapist a lot and also with my friends and just like my inner circle who are, you know, constantly checking up on me to see how everything's doing. But my uncle is currently in the ICU. He has been in the ICU since February 2nd. And he is there because of septic shock, multiple organ failure. He's got severe pneumonia. He had a collapsed lung. And so immediately as they went to the hospital, my cousins just thought that they would have to, I love that sill. You can see the spot where she was dewormed today. <laughs> <laughs> her hair looks so spiky because it's not fully dried. My cousins just thought that by taking him to the hospital because he was short of bread, they were just going to oxygenate and then move on. And it turns out as soon as they got there, they were like, no, he needs to go straight into urgent care. And so he has been in the ICU ever since. And it has been stressful, not only on the financial aspect of it, but also just emotionally and just the thought of losing a family member. I think by now, I think I've cried so much that I can talk about this with a straight face because I think one of the first things that my brain went to was almost grieving before anything totally fatal had even happened. And so I just completely went into fight or flight mode and I found it incredibly difficult to work and just get everything done with my dysthymia, which is, you know, a form of depression, which is very high functioning, was already kind of peaking and it was exacerbated by this particular event. And so I wasn't really feeling well, which is why you haven't seen the typical two uploads a week. That's why you haven't really seen a lot of like consistency in the way that I started out the year with. And so just bear with me as everything gets back to normal. He is still in a critical state. We still don't know if he is going to make it or not. And so it's just been a high cause of stress for my family at the moment. And so this is just something that you never want to see happen. And on top of, of you know, dealing with that aspect, I also had to go to get my jaw checked with my maxillofacial just to make sure that everything was good, to see how the improvement has been as of late, to level out my mouth guard that I use every night to make sure that that's functioning correctly. That is where Mel has been, and I am just now getting into a better headspace, which is why I had to take a little bit of a break from vlogging, because it was just a lot to handle that plus the vlogging. And so I just wanted to be very candid and honest about that. And now I will serve myself the rest of my dinner. I love that I said, oh my God, let me make myself dinner and put it on the plate and talk at the same time. And I ended up just talking. But anyways, I have got my food right here. So we're going to eat and do the thing while I play some parchis with my family, which is what we're currently doing. And after that, some reading and I will give you more updates on my current read. <laughs> that you can see me behind in the mirror just walking. But welcome as I attempt to find my plug-in earphones because my AirPods, oh, I literally found them right away. My AirPods are not working very well and they have not been holding their charge. And even if they are charged when I put them on, I put them on, I can listen for a little bit and then it'll say like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and it just flashes 0%. So I don't know what's happening, but I've got a live show in a little bit with Liv for the book club that we host together over on Patreon. And we are discussing her radiant cars, which I did finish. I need to update you on the book. I've literally been working on getting that finished all day. You can totally hear Liv in the background too. <laughs> But I was working on that and feeling very, very lethargic because I am getting my period, okay? And I am bloated. I am lethargic. I wanted nothing to do with getting dressed, like properly dressed. And so this is the outfit of the day, okay? Just the comfort sweatshirt and then pajama pants. That is the vibe. That is all I have got to say. I need to make myself a coffee because I'm really, really tired. And I do feel myself in the need for a little bit of caffeine. Just a little bit. So I'm going to be making myself a coffee 
coffee also for the live show because after the actual discussion we are going to be sprinting for a little bit and I'm going to be moving on to the next book which is exciting but I need to give you like a proper update welcome welcome as I make a cup of coffee because as I was telling you earlier let me fill you in we've got five minutes to chat before I have to jump into the live show where's the honey so I am getting my period soon and your girl is bloated your girl is tired the body dysmorphia is body dysmorphia okay so she's just not having that great a day but we are going to have a good time tonight have a little live show have a little coffee get started with the next book which I'm already in the midst of but we're just gonna get started with ricochet and hopefully finish it tonight that could be a vibe but today has been a slow slow day I finished her radiant curse which was the main order of business for today because as I have been mentioning the live show for it is in literally a five minutes and the book was okay I ended up giving the book three stars or I think that's what I'm gonna go with we'll see how everything goes on the live show because sometimes live shows not gonna lie they do have a way of changing my mind about things but I think that if anything this live show is going to validate the way that I feel about the book it definitely is one of those books that is pitched as it's got a good romance subplot it's got a great villain it's a fairy tale retelling and none of those vibes are really present in the book I would say it definitely feels folklore inspired but I wouldn't say that it's inspired on any specific piece of fairy tale that it sticks to any of the structural parts of a fairy tale that it is written like a fairy tale so it doesn't have any purple prose I would say that the the romance between Hoksu and Chani is null. I really don't think they've got any chemistry, which was really, really frustrating because people had mentioned how that aspect of the book was so good, how it was definitely worth it. Then as I was stepping into the story, I found that there was absolutely no chemistry between the two of them, that their interactions were low-key a little bit cringe to me. And then on top of everything, nothing really pans out between the two of them. So I don't know why this book is said to have a much romance a little bit frustrating and so that on that end i was also expecting certain things to pan out differently and they just panned out in a way that was either anticlimactic which i think kind of ruined the experience just a little bit so the resolution itself mostly was so rushed and so underwhelming i was quite sad about it because i was fully expecting the final fight like the final battle the final moment to be super super explosive and for it to feel very high stakes for our main character chani and it didn't really feel that way also i have not started brewing the coffee let's do that it didn't really feel high stakes at all for our main character which again was super frustrating because she was fighting like a literal like demon witch like it was she had like a really really big powerful villain a villain that has been out to get her and her sister for years and years and years and it the resolution of that i didn't really feel like it was the best and overall i felt like the sequence of events was a little bit rushed we were going from scene to scene to scene so rapidly that i don't think it allowed the author to build enough tension in between the bigger moments of the story Story. So again, a bit frustrating a journey, but we finished it. That's all that matters. Still is most certainly staring at the <laughs> at the milk frother and trying to, I think, send Mark the, the camera microphone. I really don't know what Sil's attempts are at the moment, but she's haughtily looking at everything. So yeah, it was a very interesting reading experience. I think all in all, it feels like a prequel it feels like set up for the main series which is the six crimson cranes series so i do have the suspicion that i am going to enjoy six crimson cranes a lot better than her radiant curse and i know a lot of people were saying to read it before you even read her radiant curse i don't think it's necessary we'll see actually once i do get into that duology and i finish it if i do think it would have added to the experience but without having read that initial series i don't feel like i missed anything context wise in this one but i am wondering now if that actual main duology is going to feel a lot better and just deliver on i think all of the points that the prequel didn't deliver on like the romance and the heavy folklore aspects and the fairy tale feel to it and so i'm hoping that those two books will do a whole lot better hopefully we'll say in my head just because of the way that the story was written and just because of the way that the sequence of events happened 
it mostly to me you know what it felt like it felt like a studio ghibli movie it didn't necessarily feel like this high action thing that i was picturing in my brain which is totally okay but to me it definitely read like a studio ghibli film something that i could definitely see plastered in animation format and i think it would do amazing in that format i genuinely think the story would thrive that way so i think those are my three cents on her radiant curse so a little bit sad that i didn't give it five stars like i initially was predicting because it was very easy to get into and i was very excited about it but at the very least let's turn on the light <laughs> At the very least, it was an enjoyable ride and it was a fun book. Like, it didn't have to be a five star, but at least it was enjoyable. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, Sil. <laughs> she wants some pets right now. She's ready to go to bed and so am I. I'm just experiencing every circle of hell with period symptomology without getting my period. Sil is like really, really going in. Babas, I know you want the pets, but not with the camera, mama. She's like, yes, give me the pets, mother. <laughs> Anyways, as I give the cat some pets, I am experiencing all of the symptoms of my period without having my period yet, which is not great from the cramps all the way to the slight about of not being able to go to the bathroom. Well, if you know, you know, if you experience that too. And then with the bloating and just everything else. Oh my God, I'm just fully ready to go to bed, but I had to do some admin work for Patreon. I was doing some readathon related things because we're doing a month long at the moment. And so I was just up updating spreadsheets and Google Forms and whatnot so that all of those would be up to date with the current information because I hadn't updated it in a few days. And then I put up a post on Patreon as well that was also readathon related. And I left some things ready for tomorrow. And I left everything kind of lined up for tomorrow morning in which I will have to continue editing. But I didn't end up reading anything after I finished a reading course, even though I wanted to. We didn't end up sprinting. <laughs> and instead, we educated the people on the Risa Tisa TikTok situation, okay? Season one of Surviving Legion. If you don't know what this is, let me fill you in because it is the most unhinged story I have ever ever heard i think you hear stories like these maybe in books or in movies but this is like a real life thing risa who ended up marrying a pathological liar a narcissist and i'm sure there's like a ton of other diagnostics in there that we are not aware of it's a 50 part series on tiktok every part is 10 minutes long and it's so long to the point that people have added it to storygraph and to goodreads as audiobooks because when you listen to everything it basically makes up like a, an eight hour story i watched every single part okay every single one and it really does get crazier and crazier and so a lot of our patrons weren't fully aware of the situation had not watched the parts yet and so instead of sprinting unhinged as things go because listen this book club is just for the vibes it's a great time but sometimes with those vibes like we just make these random ass unhinged chaotic choices and we decided to just watch an hour of this as we commented on it <laughs> during the live show. So it was a great time. Time well spent if I do argue so myself. And so I didn't end up reading anything because as soon as I was done with that, I just hopped into some worky work. But tomorrow, hopefully I will get some reading done because I definitely want to finish Ricochet before the reading, before the reading, before the weekend is over. And I think ideally I'll be able to finish it tomorrow so that on Sunday I can start Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I will talk to you guys tomorrow once a girl is more awake and running because it's literally 1 a.m. right now. I, I make it seem like it's 10 p.m. No, baby. No, no, no. It's like 1.30. I just want to go to bed. I'll talk to you tomorrow when the girl again is more awake. I will probably be talking to you as I edit and we'll go from there and I will catch you guys on the flip side and hopefully again all the reading will ensue that we can finish Ricochet. I'm also meeting up with a friend tomorrow and I don't know what our plans are, which is what we typically do. We 
always say we're gonna hang out we make no plans and then we just figure it out when we're together <laughs> so she's gonna come over and then we're going to figure out where to go what to do if we're even gonna go anywhere we'll figure it out because the beauty of the hangout is just doing so spontaneously especially because this is one of like my oldest friends like we've known each other for forever now and so it's just it's the beauty of being very impromptu with all these things that i quite appreciate it's also the very girly need i have right now to say oh my god guys i'm so sorry this vlog has been all over the place but listen sometimes with some weeks this is just what you get and i feel like this is one of those weeks but we still have half the week left because it's really only been three days so hopefully well we've got more than like a week left do we saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday we got five days left baby we're gonna be good we're gonna be good good morning friends i am feeling exactly like the lorax song that everybody has been using on tiktok you know the one the <laughs> bed has been made as we can see in the background and we are about to go into the kitchen to do the dishes that i forgot to do last night and to just tidy the kitchen up a little bit because you know when you don't mind things looking a specific way because you're like oh it's like a dish or two but i can definitely do that as i'm making breakfast no i woke up this morning first of all immediately started editing so that's what i've been sitting down and doing for the past i would say like 40 minutes or so but then i started thinking i was like dude my friend's coming over in like a little bit and if there is one thing about me okay i am most certainly my mother's daughter if somebody is coming over baby there are no dirty sinks there are no plates on the sink there are no things just laying around just because and so we need to <laughs> we need to make sure that the apartment is presentable and it's so funny because i'm like this even with the people that are like the nearest and dearest to me i don't care who's coming over i have to be in a really really bad place and it, it'd have to be truly like depression den mode for me to not clean before somebody comes over so that's how we're doing this morning i'm like it's time to clean it's time to put things away and just make sure that the house is not looking a mess and you want to know what the worst part is you want to know what mess means to me you guys are gonna laugh <laughs> this to me is a mess because everything else as you can see, it's like it's looking fine. Hi, baby. How are we doing this morning, sister? Hi, baby. But yeah, it's like everything else about the apartment is like tidy. I still have the damn memory foam pillows and their trash bags. So I need to put those in the closet. But aside from that, it's like everything else is looking as it should. It's like nothing's completely out of order. But tell that to my brain. My brain's like, everything's disgusting. So we're just going to make sure that things are looking good. Things are looking tidy so that my brain it's not going haywire and then i'm going to hop into the shower and to get dressed for the day because it is a better day i think bodily wise i don't think i'm as bloated today as i was yesterday and so just period things I, we're all girly pops for the most part so welcome 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 to the conversation so i am going to have my greens because let me tell you i've been drinking these greens religiously genuinely like don't know the science of this or like how quick it's supposed to like act or help out but i swear to god every Every time I'm feeling somewhat out of whack with like my bowel movements, I'll drink this, I'll wait an hour, bitch, I'm in the bathroom. And so it's a great time for me personally. So there's that. <laughs> most random set of updates for a vlog I think I've ever done but welcome welcome I hope you guys are enjoying this and then also what I like to do every morning which I guess we can do together actually before I even start doing the dishes and the things what I like to do every morning we're gonna fetch it the light is gonna switch a little bit I'm gonna be pale pale white baby but I like pulling an oracle card every morning you guys know tarot oracle I really do love it all Athena vibes what can I say if there is anything stereotypical about me it's probably gonna be that one. I have been really loving this particular oracle deck because it is very detailed I think in comparison to other oracle decks I have used in the past and it's got you know like advice and its message for various things so you've got like your essential meaning you've got the oracle's message you've got a relationship message a prosperity message and then a protection message and I love that it is this detailed and I mean you can see just by the length of the booklet because booklets are not typically this thick at least 
just not in my experience. And so I've been really loving this. And I think there's something that gives me extra serenity about doing this every morning and just seeing kind of, you know, where we're at at the start of the day or even at the end of the day, if I just need like a little bit of like words of wisdom and like all the things. Sil always loves when I pull like the daily oracle because she always just comes and she starts sniffing. So we've got peace, which is card 23. I don't think I've gotten this one yet. Essential meaning, freedom from attachment, radical acceptance. It doesn't get any better than this. A quiet mind, a heart fulfilled, freedom from want, and the soul satisfaction. The way to peace is through radical acceptance. Everything in your world is exactly as it should be. Harmony is beautiful. Enjoy it. This is one of those times when you're capable of clear vision about your work and how you create your prosperity. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. You're called by a presence to step into your power. Just being is enough for you are in peaceful harmony with spirit and it shows in your work. Now is a time for calmness and well-being in spite of temporary conditions, even if there are dissonant notes in the music of your life. All that means is that you must go within and fine-tune the extraordinary instrument that you are. Find harmony within yourself and don't look to the outer world to provide certainty. This too shall pass and once again your life will be filled with beautiful music. And I don't want to cry, but I think it's it's a beautiful message just given recent circumstances. I have talked about it before, like in the podcast and, and, and in videos, but I am the type of person that I always want to be in control of everything. I think because of the way that I grew up, there was a lot of, of lack of control and a lot of decisions that weren't necessarily the best for me being made for me. And so as an adult, I crave just being in a position where I can efficiently and well manage and kind of handle and dictate everything that shows up in my life. Life. And so whenever anything happens that is outside of my control, I start freaking out a lot. And just because of recent things with my whole checkup with my jaw and, and my wisdom teeth and this tooth that like has a lack of bone and the tooth being extra sensitive, like I'm talking right now, but like I feel feel its sensitivity. And then everything with my uncle and just like other things that have shown up in my life recently, it definitely feels like it's just too chaotic and there is no way for me to see clarity sometimes because I get very overwhelmed very easily in situations like that. And I always have to remind myself, listen, Therapy 101, that I, if my issue is that I cannot control everything, at least focus on the things that I can make an active difference in, focus on those things, get those changes made. And from there on out, out if the other things are not immediately fixable or if I can personally do nothing about it, then I just have to allow, you know, the universe and the situation to do its thing and in however way that needs to play out. But there's that. That's just like the way that Mal experiences life. <laughs> And so I think I definitely just needed to hear that. And listen, I got a whooping the first few times that I was using this Oracle deck because it really was the way that it told me you do not need to be needed to be loved. And I immediately knew I was in for a ride. I'm gonna go do the dishes now. I'll talk to you guys once a girl is ready for the day. And there's that. I, I don't know what the day holds in terms of plans with my friend. Um, I need to talk to Alex about that because I'm like, I don't know what we're doing. Uh, we typically always go out to eat and then we pop by to a few bookstores this is like the biggest like reading friend I have got. She loves books. When we were in high school, we used to read books together. We both attempted writing books in high school. Like we were each other's biggest enablers when it comes to book buying and just like reading in general. And so there are a lot of fond memories with Alex and just books. <laughs> <laughs> and so I genuinely don't know what today will hold, which actually I think works out perfect because anytime I on-haul books, Alex is one of the first few people that get first dibs on on-hauled books. And because I have still not taken the books that I need to donate to the donation center, she'll get her first pick today of what she wants to take back home with her. I'm sure she'll take quite a bit because she always does. And then after that, it's, you know, I can actually donate the books, which I think is gonna be lovely.
literally not even done with the video. I am starting editing for day five, so I still have technically three more days to go editing wise, and I'm already an hour and seven minutes into this video. Weekly vlogs are so interesting because editing them, I mean, not only do they take a long time, but the filming portion on the flip side of it is like so fascinating because even if I'm weekly vlogging right now, I never really know like what to include, what to leave out, like what you guys want to see more of, what you guys want to see less of, and I always feel like really bad and listen i'm like trying to like consistently get out of that mindset but i always feel bad when there's like more lifestyle than books because i really don't know what ratio you guys prefer but i just like showing like what the everyday is like and there are days where there's no reading there are days where i do read there are days that are a little bit more all over the place with emotionally work-wise personally and just how everything kind of um shows up and manifests into you know like daily living and so with this particular vlog i'm like damn like these talking portions are long and that I mean, kind of happens every time because we know like a girl loves to talk. There, There's a reason why this is my job, but there, I just always feel bad. I'm like, damn, this clip is like 10 minutes long. Like I have to make it as short as possible. But then when I'm talking, I'm like, okay, but like, why would I cut this out? Like it makes sense if it's in. So that's what I'm, I'm currently dealing with editing wise, which I always say editing Mel hates filming Mel because they have two different mindsets. And while editing Mel is just thinking about efficiency and getting the editing done as fast as possible, filming Mel, me right now is thinking about how how can I make this video like the best experience by providing like more chats and like more tidbits and stuff? And so while the two kind of do mesh together really nicely in the end, sometimes it's a little bit of a tumultuous journey. Also known as me right now, like this video is gonna be long. Like this video, if I had to put any guesses, oh, probably gonna be an hour and a half long, which I'm sure you guys will absolutely adore. But just know, just know it's a labor of love, okay? <laughs> that said, I completely forgot to show you guys these three books that I said I would show you because alongside the tea pod and the SD card and then the honey container. I got these three books and I said I was going to show you guys and do a little haul and I completely forgot about it. But first thing I got was Bride by Ali Hazelwood, which I'm so excited about. I've been having this conversation with my patrons for a little bit there. I also love that this just wobbles every time I move the table. I'm so sorry. I've been having this conversation with my patrons about how we have a huge gap in paranormal romance. And I mean that in the sense that traditionally published paranormal romance books are particularly not maybe as popular, not as accessible, not as good sometimes. And it's been really frustrating for me because I love paranormal romance, both in film and in book format. One of my favorite movies of all time is Underworld. Don't we know it? If you don't know, let me fill you in. One of my favorite movies ever is Underworld. And when I used to read a shit ton on Wattpad, what was my primary source of reading outside of fan fiction? Paranormal romances. I used to read a shit ton of Omegaverse, a crap ton of vampire romances, werewolf romances, even outside of the Omegaverse kind of setup. And I used to love that. Fallen Angel, suck you by just everything. I used to freaking love it all. And now that I am reading, obviously, like traditionally published books or books that are self-published or on KU, but things that are like typically like more, you know, more read instead of reading on Wattpad exclusively, I find myself not really finding good paranormal romance books. I've tried and I end up DNFing every single one because they're just not that good, which is sad. And so I, seeing that Ali Hazelwood was publishing a paranormal romance and given that her rise to popularity really was because of her Omegaverse fan fiction. I am so excited to read Bride. A bunch of my patrons have already read it because this is our book club pick for March, but a lot of them have already like gotten ahead of the reading because of the readathon we're currently doing and everybody's loving it and that in and of itself gives me so much hope that I am going to love this too and find a good one and if this is the new direction Ali Hazel would wants to go on. Aside from her STEM series, I am all in for this. I am so excited about Bride. And so I can't wait to read that when the time is due. I got the seven year slip because I placed a library hold on this, but the hold is so long that I still don't have like an exact week count for how long the hold is going to be. So it just says several months wait. So I just decided to get the book physically because the, the ebook wasn't that cheap either. And so I, I try and make that conscious decision of if the ebook is going to be $8 and then the paperback is going to be 11 might as well just get the paperback for, uh, you know, two or three dollars more. And then I got Villains Are Destined to Die Volume 4. 
because I have read up to volume three and I really, really love this series and I want to keep on going. The newest volume, volume six, just came out. So I want to read volume four so that I can then get volumes five and six. And so there's that. I got this one. So we're going to be reading that this weekend because I kind of forgot that I had gotten it and it's not on my TBR, but I think, fuck it. <laughs> I really want to get this read. So we're going to read this probably during sprints tomorrow. If not tonight, we'll see how it goes. So literally the next two reading plans we have got are Ricochet and Villains Are Destined to Die and then we'll move on to Powerless. The vibes are there. The vibes are there. <laughs> Salutations, my friends. Buenas, buenas. How is everyone doing today? Love this the most. This is like the craziest angle ever, but I am turning off my computer. Because we are about to head out, I have some errands to run. Today is Monday, by the way, so also completely just wet my shirt. It's going to be fine. Bear with me for a second. Today is Monday. Hi, welcome. I went to the gym this morning. I love that every time I'm like, I'm going to do something different. And I've said this before. I always end up in the kitchen. Had full intentions of filming my workout. However, these past few weeks, there have been like new people joining the gym. And so depending on the day, depending on the morning, there will be people there. Sometimes it's empty. Today was one of those days where it was full and I will never record specifically in, in more like small spaces. I will never record if there are people around me in that way because I respect people's privacy. And so went to the gym this morning, came back, had brekkie, shower, wash the hair. It was hair wash day. And now I am ready to go out and tackle the day. This is the outfit of the day. We've got jeans, the belt. We have got the shirt. This is my uncle's brand. He owns a fashion streetwear brand. And so I, I always try and rep as much as I can. And so we have got this going on and I will put on like my cropped like zip up hoodie because part of the activities for the day include going to the movie theater. So let me fill you in on yesterday. The the book I'm currently reading and what's up today. So yesterday I had sprints. I went over to my mom's partner's house. We all hung out together. You guys saw in the B-roll my mom going batshit crazy over NBA Jam. My mom has become a gamer and we don't know what to do about it. She loves playing Mortal Kombat. She loves playing NBA Jam. That was part of the activities yesterday and while I was over there, I was reading. So let me show you what I was reading while I was there and also turn on my living room light because it's a little, there we go. Now I'm a little bit too pale, but just bear with me also the trash bag that I need to take out once I leave. It's, it's just, you know, it's just chilling there. But let me just with a very bent bookmark show you what I've been reading. You guys know how much I love, or if you don't know, let me fill you in. I absolutely love Villains Are Destined to Die. It's a manhwa, which is a Korean graphic novel similar to a manga in illustration. However, we read it, you know, front to back like a regular novel. And this is particularly an isekai manhwa, which means that the main plot line includes our main character going to a world that is not her own, particularly a video game world. And so our main character has been playing this game that basically allows you to play as the heroine or as the villain. But the entire point of the game is to earn affection points to see which character will win. In easy mode, you play as the Duke's lost daughter. She earns points very fast and the whole point of her arc is to find her way back home. Whereas in hard mode, you play as Penelope Eckhart, which is her stand-in. Basically, she poses as the Duke's daughter because they look virtually the same. 
game, but she is considered the villainess. And it's not that she is villainous, it's just that she has always been mistreated and she is not afraid of returning the same sentiment to the people who do mistreat her. And so our main character enters the game after she falls asleep playing it and come to find out she is playing as Penelope Eckhart. So she's playing in hard mode where it's incredibly easy to lose affection points. And so because she's already played the game, we really see her try and machinate this thing very consciously, very smartly and very strategically because she does already know certain series of events that are going to, you know, play out and she knows what will get her affection points, what will lose her affection points. However, there are loads of quests that she ends up unlocking because she never fully got there. You know, she never got to that level while playing the game or it's just something that never really presented itself. And so it's a really great mix between she already knows things that are going to happen and then there are also loads of things that are a complete surprise to her that she has to figure out as she goes. But our main character is super intelligent and she just knows how to navigate this world to the best of her ability. Does that sometimes mean that she loses affection points? Yes, but the way that she is earning them specifically in this volume, I'm like, it's a little bit too easy. She's earning those points. And for me personally, out of all of the love interests, because there are honestly that I can remember five, there could be more. I honestly can't remember, but out of the ones that I remember that are the most visible in the storyline, <laughs> I really love Callisto, which I never thought I'd say, because Callisto comes across as like the cocky, I feel like I'm the best person and to walk this earth prince. I have slowly but surely fallen in love with him and the way that he interacts with Penelope I think is quite unmatched. And I think particularly in this volume we're starting to find out things about his past and we're really building his character and the way that he simply interacts with Penelope is so much better than any of the other characters and I love that after really disliking him the first time we saw him I'm starting to really fall in love with him in this particular volume and I really do think he's the best match for Penelope because we see a lot of the other love interest either baby her, be really hateful with her, toward her, underestimate her, try and limit her ability, question all of her decisions, and just really don't believe in her. And I think Calisto, as opposed to all of the other love interests, is really willing to allow her to exist as her own person and make her own decisions and supports her through her rights and her wrongs. And he really does love seeing the really stubborn, really dedicated, almost assertive aspect of her. And he doesn't try and limit that as opposed to some of the other characters that we see and so I am really coming to like their their little interactions in this one which is honestly quite surprising. I have probably around maybe like a hundred pages left of this volume. This is volume four and so I can't wait to see where it pans out but I absolutely am loving this one. I think this may be one of my favorite volumes and I think that as opposed to earning and losing points this volume does a really great job at balancing everything happening, you know, like there's action-packed moments where the character has to embark on a hunt. And so we do see her be like a boss ass bitch, which I absolutely love. And so we get those moments, then we get the more tense moments between her and the love interest, but her earning points through those interactions. We see her build connections with characters that we haven't necessarily built connections with before. And we really do see her be especially cunning in this one and make really great decisions for for herself and so I think this this is going to go right to the top as far as as my favorite volumes for this particular series goes because this has been really really good and I need to get volumes five and six I don't know what the plans are after that or when volume seven is going to come out I don't think six is going to be the end of it but I need to get those two so that I can read those very very soon so that's what I've been reading first thing I need to do is I need to go to the grocery store I need to get eggs I woke up this morning and I didn't realize I had a singular egg left on my fridge and so I ended up ordering through one of our food apps. I ordered some eggs, but I get jumbo eggs because I don't know if it actually like makes any difference size wise. I really think that it feels like it. I don't know. I need to get some butter because we're running out. I also need to get floss, but because I'm going to the mall anyway, I think it's just best for me to pop into the grocery store real quick, get what I need to get. Oh, I need to also get salt. It's like random. I need to actually jot these things down because I will fully forget by the time that I get there. And then I am going to the movie theater with Alex, the friend that 
that I was talking to you guys about that she came over on Saturday. She literally took about 70% of the books that I on hauled, which I absolutely love. She again is like the biggest reader in my life. And so as soon as she saw a bunch of the books, she was like, oh hell yeah, I'm taking these with me. And so I am glad that I was able to, you know, pass those on to better hands. And so yeah, we're gonna go watch Anyone But You. I've already watched it, but she was like, dude, I haven't been able to go watch it with anybody. I was like, girly bop, I'll go with you. What do you mean? And so I bought us tickets. It's gonna be a great time. She literally is getting off work not too long from now. So I need to rally all my stuff and skedaddle because we, we agreed to meet up a little earlier at the mule to do all the things. This is the tote bag of the day. It's the Blackwell's tote bag, which I absolutely have been loving with my outfit. But anyways, I'm not gonna take the volume with me because I just don't know that I'm gonna get any reading done. I cannot foresee that happening as we walk around the mall and like do all the things. So I'm just gonna go, you know, bookless, but that's gonna be fine. I'm not gonna lie. I did think about scrapping this vlog because this past week as I've been getting back into weekly vlogging, I've been just really inconsistent with updating you guys, but I thought might as well just like keep it, you know, like I have already finished a book. I'm on my way to finish this volume. I'm going to finish Ricochet by the time that the vlog is over. And so why would I scrap a perfectly good vlog? And so now I think I'm encountering the opposite of what I used to encounter. In the past, I didn't weekly vlog because I thought it was too long. And so I always kind of scrapped the vlogs because I was like, it's too much, it's too long and I'm being excessive. And now I am experiencing the, oh my God, but it's not gonna be long enough. Honestly, every single update I have given so far this vlog has probably been like 15 minutes long. So baby, it's gonna be long. Like who are we kidding? But I don't want to lug around the camera, so I'm just going to record with my phone and get you guys some b-roll through that. And I will talk to you guys as soon as I get back home, which should be nighttime, but hopefully we will be able to finish Villains or Destined to Die before we go to bed. So you shall get more updates today. Hell yeah. <laughs> ever have the question of what the English section looks like in a bookstore here in Panama. This is it. It makes no sense. Literally ADHD. Don't I have it? Don't we know it? Just a singular city of glass. Some Elena Ferrante books. Some random books over here. We have this random book, The Kim Kardashian Principle, because apparently that's important. Um, yeah. When I talk about accessibility or lack thereof, this is exactly what I mean, because like, what is this? Welcome to a new day. I am looking very disheveled right now. Hello. I don't even know how to kneel, how to do this. I was like, oh my God, let's have a little bit of a different angle. And I'm like kneeling on the floor now. I don't know that this was the greatest idea ever. Let's switch this up. This is like a little bit messier than I was expecting. Please hold. I think this is a little bit better. My hair is doing things today. Okay. So just ignore the hair for a second. I have been working all day. Hello. Because <laughs> it is the end of February. Hi, Veen. She wants to go to her cat tower. You guys are gonna suffer the commotion. Oh, she was gentle. That wasn't so bad, Veen. Thank you, baby. Now she's gonna try and attack her sister, but that's a different conversation. Anyways, I've been working all day because today is February 28th. So we are prepping for the new month, doing all the things for March. I have to still schedule out all of the things happening for Patreon for March. If you see this move, I am so sorry. This was probably also a terrible idea, but I need to schedule out all the things for March. I need to make graphics and everything to schedule to Patreon. So work still needs to be done today so we're still not done need to reply to some youtube comments as well i'm just gonna make myself some coffee but today oh my god vin is grooming so it's probably very aggressive i was gonna make myself a cup of coffee because i still have a long ways to go today and it is afternoon time so we can't hit that afternoon slump however my face is feeling kind of neon at the second at the second at the moment at the minute because i had to use a specific mouthwash for my after gum procedure and i didn't realize that that had 
like a numbing effect. And now that I am out of it after using it for two weeks now, my gums feel like super strange because I don't really know what it's like to go without it. And so now I'm feeling like super strange. Like my upper lip area is feeling just a little bit strange, but I did text my doctor and she said it was fine. As I was saying, my camera ran out of battery because I am terrible at charging the ones that are blinking. But we're back, hello, because the girl's always prepared on that end and I always have a backup battery. Anyways, my doctor said it was fine, so I'm not too concerned about that, but it's hard to ignore this. So I don't want to exacerbate it by having coffee because that already has some, some pretty interesting effects on my face. Oh my God, Vin keeps climbing higher and higher. This is our cat right now. She's just chilling there. Like she's not even like fully going up. Up, up. Watch her climb now that I've put you guys back on the cat tower. Anyways, all that to say, that's been the day today. It's just been taking care of my gums, a little bit of work and finishing this puppy right here, which is the update I want to give you guys because I finished Villains or Destined to Die Volume 4. I got volumes 5 and 6 ordered, which is very exciting because I have to see where we go next and I have to see what the trial, with no context, that makes no sense. But if you've read this, then you know. I want to see the outcome of the trial, what's going to happen to Calisto. I need to see and to know everything. But this, again, is probably one of my favorite volumes in the series so far. It, again, was action-packed. There was character development. There was romance development. And then every single bit of it was so dynamic and interesting and fascinating and, and just all the things that I absolutely loved it and it reminded me of why I love this series so much because the previous volume volume three was nowhere near as exciting and it was also very frustrating because it was a little bit too much of that back and forth and I think at this point at volume six I feel like we should start making more progress but I really don't know how many volumes are planned out for this series so I don't know how much longer we're gonna keep going in that back and forth but it was really really cool to see our main character step into her own in this volume and to not be afraid to make really bold choices and to incorporate aspects of her real life into the game to help her make better moves as the story moves on. I absolutely loved it because so far my question with the series has always been when the series culminates, is our main character going to go back to real life to her own body or is she going to stay in the game? And when she falls in love with the these other like characters, whoever she ends up with, is it her, the real person, falling in love with this character or is it a character on character interaction? Because I think it's so interesting. I've never read an isekai, so I really don't know what the dynamic typically is. So I don't know what the plans are for the end. So very curious to see that. So can't wait to read a volume five. I'll probably read that in March. And depending on how that goes, maybe even volume six, because I absolutely love this. The volume six is the last one that just came out in February and we don't have a release date or anything. I don't think announcement one for volume seven. So I don't know what the plans are moving forward. So I think I should pace myself probably one a month and we'll go from there. And now the other thing I want to finish is Ricochet by Krista and Becca Ritchie. Kristen actually sent me a voice message. So I need to listen to that to see how she's going with the book if she's finished it. But this will be another order of business today after I get some work done because tomorrow I am not only starting out a new weekly vlog, but tomorrow I need to film my March TBR and I also need to film my February wrap up and in order to do those things tomorrow I need to wrap up the desk work today we need to do that but you know we're on track to at least finish ricochet if not by tonight then by tomorrow morning so whenever I do finish it I'll let you guys know because I definitely want to wrap that up in this vlog so by the way let's go to the office because I need to fetch bride by Ali Hazelwood because that is our March book club pick over on patreon I think it's gonna make for such great discussion and so I need to make a chapter breakdown of the book so that if people want to sync up as we read, we can do so. And I, oh, I'm so excited about Bride. I think it's probably going to be one of the best books we'll read this year. And I can't wait to see what Ali Hazelwood is going to do. Let's get some work done. I'll film the little B-roll and hopefully again, we're able to finish Ricochet today. And I also probably at some point will have to fetch a warm compress because I'm experiencing all the symptoms today <laughs> from the gum, not necessarily pain, but the slightly numbed out sensation to my face feeling a bit out of wick, which I can't tell if it's like my gums or my jaw, but I think it's the gums because my jaw doesn't hurt. And then the migraine, I feel it settling in just right here, just like the pain in my head. And so maybe a warm compress will have to ensue.
love that I'm taking advantage of this lighting because I just filmed a little wrap up and I also filmed my March TBR to say that I finished Ricochet. And I'm giving this four stars to round out the vlog to close everything out. I really enjoyed the tidbits of seeing Lily's relationship with her family and also seeing her therapy sessions. I think it was a nice addition to her set of struggles, which we see obviously very closely. I feel like this lighting is like really strong, so I'm so sorry. But we get to see her therapy sessions, which is a nice addition to seeing her own set of struggles because we really see her go through it without low and her trying to figure out obviously kind of where or how her life looks without low in it as she tries to figure out this whole thing and exactly what her therapist wants her to work on, what steps she needs to go through in order to continue healing her sex addiction. I think all of that was quite fascinating and I loved that really intimate look at how she was not always doing really well and how some days were really rough, how some days she kind of relapsed if that's what we call this specific case too, and how she has to find continuously better coping mechanisms mechanisms to deal with the urges that she has got instead of relying once more on those really unhealthy toxic ones and so I think that was like the strongest suit of this book is seeing her dynamic with her family seeing her therapy sessions seeing the struggles I really loved her calls with Lo I think they were really sweet and I think specifically on Lo's end is what I really love seeing him being so strong in the fact that as soon as he returns they're getting together like this is the person for Lo he is the person for Lily and seeing the way that he talks now in comparison to book one where he was very very rude and he was just very mean a lot of the time it was a breath of fresh air to see him you know to kind of hear him in a healthier headspace and I can't wait for Lily to get on that same wavelength because now I'm finding that I like Lo a little bit more than Lily but it's obviously because you can tell that he is healing while Lily is still very much struggling because it seems like she cannot do the healing without Lo there and so I'm, I'm kind of heartbroken at that fact but also very curious to see how that's gonna pan out in book three I was gonna say book two but book three because I'm afraid of some shitty shit happening because of it and so we'll see how it all pans out but I'm giving it four stars didn't really love the flashbacks with Lo the Daisy and Reich bits just because she's 16 I don't know how I feel about it too much and I know that they're like each other's love interests in the future and so I don't really know how I feel about it so I'm feeling a little bit weird now but it's okay didn't really love that didn't really love the flashbacks and seeing Lily get intimate with Lo when they were teenagers. I just found it a bit too uncomfortable to read. But aside from that, everything else about the book I liked. And so I think four stars is pretty good for it. That is the end of this week's vlog, friends. A little bit sad that it's over. And it was a really kind of like chaotic week as I was getting back into work and the routine of everything. I obviously did not expect February to go the way that it did. And so it was a really kind of chaotic journey, but we have made our way into the end of the month, which is kind of appreciated. So there's that. Let a girl know how your week has been. I know February was a lot for a lot of people. So if you want to share how your February was, what you've been reading this past week, do let a girl know all of that. And I kind of want to apologize, though I know I technically shouldn't have to, but still the sentiment goes, I know this was probably not the most exciting vlog in comparison to some other ones that I've put out in the past, but we're just keeping it real as we go. And just, you know, that's the whole point of a weekly vlog is that I'm able to open up and talk to you guys about what's happening as things are happening and just be a bit more vulnerable and and give you guys a closer look into what's happening as all of these things are being filmed and all the things are happening. So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this weekly vlog. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below if you did. And again, let a girl know how your February was, how this past week has been for you, what you've been reading this past week. And if you reach the end of the video, let us leave a, hmm, what emoji can we leave in the comments? Something purple anything purple for Ricochet. Let us leave a purple emoji down in the comments if you reach the very end. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more content like this, but a little bit better, okay? This weekly vlog was a little bit out of whack, so if you like this but better, <laughs> subscribe. And if you want to support the channel further, Patreon is always linked down below in case you guys want a ton of live shows, a Discord server, a book club, and just a ton of things that you're not going to see anywhere else. Patreon is always linked at the top of the description alongside all of my socials in case you guys want to find me anywhere else. Love you all so, so much. Thank you for bearing with me this week as we get back into the routine of everything and i will catch you guys on the flip side we're starting a new vlog on friday and i'm really excited about it